Josh, why would you consider variable rate mortgages on your buy-to-let properties? Hi everyone, I hope you're doing really well. Welcome to this video where I'm going to explain my thinking behind it. Blue Sapphire, thank you ever so much for your comment. Hopefully this helps you. I'm now going to explain variable rate mortgages. Now the first thing to note, there are different types of variable rate mortgages. There's a standard variable rate, there's a discounted rate, and there's a tracker rate. But they are all in this group of variable rate mortgages, which means the rate can vary. Now, to understand why I would even consider a variable rate mortgage versus a fixed rate mortgage, you need to really understand how loans are priced. And loans are all priced in the same way. They start with a basis of an interest rate, and that is called the risk-free rate. This is the money that investors lend to the government, and then they return it. And it's called a risk-free rate because in developed countries, the governments always pay their debts. So that's the basic rate of any form of loan, the risk-free rate. On top of that, we get this term spread. So loans that are lent out for a longer period of time cost more than loans that are lent out for a shorter period of time because that loan has greater exposure to volatility in the market. Therefore, it costs more to borrow for the longer term. On top of those two, we get the liquidity spread. How easy is it for a creditor to liquidate their assets? And on top of that, then you get the personal credit spread. So depending upon your personal circumstances, your credit rating, that is your credit spread. And the greater risk you are personally, the greater that costs, the better risk you are, the cheaper it is, the smaller the spread or the yield. So that then, let's just say for sake of argument, is a 1% interest rate for the risk-free rate, 1% for the term spread, 1% interest rate for the liquidity spread, and 1% return for the credit spread, making a total loan of costing you 4% for sake of argument. And this is in the era before the mini budget. Now, what happens then after that, we find that costs now are 5%. All the loans, whether they're two year fixes, five year fixes, anything has already gone up in value. Now, if we keep our focus on mortgages, because this is what we're talking about, what has caused the increase in mortgage rates? And the answer to that is, it's the risk-free rate. And let's just work this backwards now. The credit spread, these have not been assigned because these, these are just on the market. These are not products that have been taken by any particular individual. So the credit risk, credit spread is still the same. The liquidity spread is also still the same. You're still selling a house if it can go wrong in a two year fix or a five year fix or any form of po uh, pre mini budget and you're still selling a house um, post mini budget. So the liquidity spread is still the same. The term spread, whether it's a two year fix or a five year fix, everything's gone up in value. So the term is still the same. The, the, the risk with a two year fix is now a more expensive two year fix, still a two year fix. The term two year fix or five year fix has stayed the same. The difference has come from the risk free rate. And this is because the chancellor said, we're gonna spend billions of pounds, tens of billions of pounds in fact, and we have not gonna publish any form of costings, how we're going to repay our investors. The risk is say, well, if I'm gonna lend money to you and you haven't got a costing hanging and paying back, there's a greater uh, yield I require. And so therefore the risk free rate has increased, meaning now the whole loan has gone up, even though these three components have essentially stayed the same. Now, what does this apply? What does this look like then in the mortgage market um, in terms of interest rates? Now, what you find is you get a two year fix, which if you look at this chart here, at the beginning of this, the five year fix was more expensive than the two year fix. And why is that? Because as I said, the five year fix, that lent out money has greater exposure to volatility in the market, it's going to cost more. But what we find now is we now have the two year fix that's costing more than a five year fix, which is very unusual. So what is the changing component that's led to this two year fix being costing more than a five year fix. And it's in the answer, it's the two or the five year, that's the difference. And let me explain that in terms of what we just looked at. The two year fix, because these are now post mini budget announcements, the base interest rate is now 2%. This is both of them have increased. Again, these loans, the two year fix and the five year fix that are available in the market haven't been assigned to individuals. So the risk, the credit spread risk hasn't been factored in yet. The liquidity spread, both for a two year fix or a five year spread, is still the same. They're still dealing, dealing with properties. So the only difference component that, that adds to the difference is the term spread. The two year term is greater volatility. That's what they're saying. And then the, the long term, the five year outlook, things are going to get, get, get settled down again. So costs are going to come down. So then of the two products, which one do you go for? Would you go for the two year fix or the five year fix? Which, by the way, at the time recording now, as you saw in a previous video, they're basically the same cost. And the answer to that is I would, of the two, consider a five year fix. 
because you're going to get three extra years more than the two year fix and it costs the same thing. So I go for the five year fix. But why is that still not a good idea? And the answer to that is this. Really, the choice is, do I go for a five year fix or do I go for a variable rate? Now, again, the variable rate might change, but on the five year fix, if, to continue our analogy of a £120,000 house, borrowing 75% of the value at £90,000, and I fix at 5.16%, my mortgage payments every month are £387. Or, same loan to value, £90,000, and I'm going to borrow at 2.64%, it's only going to cost me £198 per calendar month. This is half the price of the fix. Now, you see, I have opportunity then, that's going to be fixed for five years. I can, if this price goes up, I don't think it's going to go up much higher than 5.16% because it looks like in the long term, the market feels that the, the, how things, that the whole situation is going to settle down. The problem is a two year problem, 12, 24 months, not a long term problem. So I think the interest rates are going to come down in the long term. So I'm not going to fix when I think on the most expensive part of the mortgage market. So what I'll do is I think I'm going to take the, the variable rate and things might go up. It might go up to 3%, but I'm still cheaper. It might go up to 3.5%, I'm still cheaper. And every single month, it's below 5.16%. I am earning money. So it's half price at the moment. It might not be half price for the duration of five years, but I think it's going, never going to go as expensive as this. Even if it does, it's got to go significantly higher than this for me to have lost my gains from saving half price for every single month. It's at 2.64%. So what will I do with that difference, that £189 difference from the 387 minus the 198? I might, well, put this into an ISA, earning 4% on interest rate. And if anything does go, as these things rates do go up, I've got some extra savings I've put away, and I can just pay my variable rate mortgage for the saving that I have made every single month, but it's lower than the 5.16%. And that is why I am going to be considering variable rate mortgages on our refinance next year. Now, I'd love to know what you think. We'd love to know what you make of this. I'd love to know what you're doing or planning to do if you're thinking of doing mortgages, refinancing and buying in the new year. So do let us know in the comments. I really enjoy reading them. Blue Sapphire, thank you once again for your comment. I really appreciate it. And if any of you have got any other comments or things you'd like us to give our perspective on, please do share it. It'd be very interesting to give our, our perspective. That's it for this one. Thank you ever so much for watching. We appreciate your support and we look forward to seeing you in the next one.